Welcome to another video from the Heart Factory. So to expose an intramyocardial LAD, there are many tricks to expose the LAD either proximally or distally. As you can see here, I have exposed the LAD distally and it is quite deep. So you can see the LV side and the RV side and I am trying to clear the few myocardial fibers on the anterior aspect of the LAD. The point is the LED is exposed just for an inch and one can imagine how the graft would sit onto this LED and what would be the flow characteristics of this graft once it is placed on the LED. Also one has to make sure that one will be able to engage the pot scissors to enlarge the arteriotomy once it's opened. So this is how the LED is placed deep within the muscle, within the LV and the RV. It's in the depth and with this scenario, once you expose this LED, if you graph the LED in the current scenario, as you can see at the right top hand, the graft would create an angle with the LED and may be detrimental in the long term in terms of patency. The neck of the graft that feeds the LED may kink as you can see in the second image and that may also affect its long term patency. And ideally, we would want a graph to be around 30 degrees angle with the LED so that there is laminar flow from the graph with a good runoff in the LED. There is no turbulence or a decurrence generated at the site of anastomosis. With this logic that the graph should lie, should have a smooth landing onto the LED and should not create a kink either its neck. This is what it is, how the graft would lie in the current scenario. We would want to create a well. So we usually create a SVG hood onto the LED in its depth. It's easy to handle the LED. And then feed this SVG hood with the lima. It is kind of a construction of a dam. And the lima would then feed the hood and from there on to the LED. This is what we usually do with all intramyocardial LEDs and the logic being that the nitric oxide of the lima is transferred to the SVG and I guess will be helpful in the long term. And in the process as you can see there is venous blood coming out at the site of arteriotomy. So this is an iatrogenic problem so we have entered the RV. It's a small opening at this stage but within no time this will enlarge this will become big and the whole of the RV will give way. So at this stage what one can do is just ask the assistant to hold it with the finger. Take a 5O or 4O suture and go parallel to the LED. So as you can see here. Take a stitch parallel to the LED on either side and just gently approximate the LV to the RV. So what you are doing is, you are not occluding the LED, the LED is flowing between these muscle fibers. You are just trying to bring the RV wall against the LED. Now the suture may occlude the LED but having said that the pressure within the RV is less compared to the arterial pressure. And I guess this will give you some amount of time to either expose the LED proximally or distally and then graft it accordingly. But this RV tear as you can see within no time is increasing in size and I took a suture like this to just control the bleeding so that it will give me time to go on cardiopulmonary bypass and then handle the problem accordingly. So in the next video we will discuss about how to handle this particular problem. This problem can create massive air embolism and fall in pressures. This problem can worsen within no time with RV tear worsening. And the problem here is with veining graft, as you can see, I have grafted the diagonal at the top, the OM in between, there is hardly any place on the iota. So this is poor planning. But uh, one has to establish cardiopulmonary bypass and arrest the heart to, to handle this situation. So the next video we will see how to, how we did it. Thanks for watching.